All right, thank you for joining us for Staying Alert with Christian Overcomers. And today we're going to discuss the possibility of a world currency and how it could affect us. You know, many things are happening today that many people said 10 years ago could never come to pass. But those of us who informed ourselves in God's Word knew that these things could and would come to pass because they were prophesied of long ago in God's Word. But before we begin our discussion, please listen for a brief moment as we share something with you. The book of Daniel prophesies of the rise and fall of many kingdoms, nations, and empires all the way up to the time that Christ returns, including the rise and fall of a new world order led by the Antichrist, of which we are encouraged to withstand and make it until the 1335th day. So find out how it's all going down by ordering our 8 CD set on the Book of Daniel. It is available online at www.christianovercomers.com. Hey Ben, it's good to be back with you again. You too. Um, lately we've heard a lot of talk about a need for a one world currency. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that this is going to happen? Um, in Revelation 13 verse 17, it does mention that at some point, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later probably, but at some point there will be a world currency and no one will be able to buy or sell unless they partake in that, in that world currency. So yes, at some point there will be. Okay. Many people teach uh, that in order to buy or sell on this new world order that's coming, mm -hmm. that we'll have to receive a computer chip uh, like in our hand. And they say this because of the scripture that says that the beast is going to make everyone receive a mark in either their right mm -hmm. hand or their, uh, upon their forehead. Do you believe that we're going to be forced to have to take some kind of a, a computer chip or that they're going to put a chip in us? Well, first off, no one can force you to do anything as far as worshiping. They can convince you and persuade you to. But um, first, I think what we're dealing with here in that scripture that you're referring to is it's uh, more of a symbolic, has more of a symbolic meaning. Because mm -hmm. back in the day, um, people who devoted themselves to certain pagan gods and, and goddesses actually branded themselves with some kind of symbol depicting their god. And uh, as well as uh, many times um, slave owners branded their slaves with their symbol as well. So I think that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at more of a, it's kind of symbolic of being submissive to, um, agreeing with, uh, partaking with, and that sort of thing. So, But at the same time, um, in order for this to happen, there has to be, there, there obviously will be some sort of technology used in connection with being able to buy or sell. I mean, we're moving into that era, era where, you know, technology is being used for everything. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't discount totally that, you know, there may be some kind of device used for this world currency coming to, you know, coming to pass in the future. Mm -hmm. I know there's many things, many, there's a lot of talk about RFID chips mm -hmm. and uh, tracking and stuff. Well, you know, it just seems like the more and more, well, we're seeing it in our airports today. Um, we keep moving closer and closer to a police state where they're tracking, monitoring, and controlling everything we do. Mm -hmm. And in order for a new world order to operate, uh, um, you know, under the guise of peace and security, they need to uh, they need to use certain technologies to track track everything to keep people in order. Right. And uh, that's just what we're dealing with. Okay. So you just mentioned technology and. Mm -hmm. I actually, this, just this past week, I came across uh, something in the news or an article that I thought was very fascinating. And what it had to do with was three of the largest wireless providers here in our country are all partnering up together. In the next 18 months, what they're doing, and for anybody that's listening, you can search us on Google, you can find it. Um, but what they're doing is they want to use technology on phones in this case, mm -hmm. And they want to create a system where people can use their wireless phones uh, basically to make payments with their phones. Okay. And what their goal is, is they want to eliminate cash, mm. checks, um, credit cards, coupons, gift cards, um, all the way down to tickets and transit mm. passes. Kind of sounds 
like they're consolidating everything into one thing. Is that kind of what you're getting at here? Basically, yeah. Okay. And and they're actually the the name of this program they're calling it ISIS. Mm. I S I S. Mm. Okay. Does this name um, is there any significance to this name ISIS to you? Uh, you know, knowing you know a little bit about what you're talking about, because I I think I've read some of the same articles you have, and. Um, the name, yeah, the, it is significant because the name Isis is the name of a pagan goddess mm -hmm. who is known as like the perfect mother and protector and so forth back in the time. And it, she, she was actually, her image was actually stamped upon Roman coins up until the year 400, I believe 400 AD. And um, a lot of the uh, traders out on the sea, you know, because back in those days, that's how the merchants made their money. Mm -hmm. Everything was traded over the seas. So a lot of these merchants um, worship this goddess um, and asking her for calm seas protection so that they can get their goods from point A to point B, mm. you know, and make their make their income, make their profit. So they they counted, you know, they worship this false goddess um, and in hopes that she would help uh, give them success. Right. And um, so it is significant, and as well as. Um, in Revelation 13, it mentions there that uh, the the number of the beast mm -hmm. was 666, 666. Right. But that was also a, uh, the equivalent of that in the Greek alphabet was the three letters S in the mm -hmm. Greek, S, 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 which um, was used by Isis. It was a symbol of Isis, mm -hmm. as well as being a secret symbol for many other pagan uh, mystery religions. Right. So we see here, it just, it seems like there's a lot of connection to do with commerce, um, you know, one worldism, and that number 666 mm -hmm. in connection with ISIS. So I guess we could say this for sure, that more and more each day as we get into this generation, we're seeing the paganism being revived. You know, here it's out in the open, ISIS. I mean, who would come up with that name right. unless they, you know, were... were worshiping her so to speak and guys that she's going to uh help make their endeavor uh prosperous you know right. making uh you know making them uh successful and implementing this one world currency yeah no you're right and it's interesting too that you know like we're talking about uh, <laughs> you know not being able to buy or sell mm -hmm. and them trying to consolidate basically eliminating cash you know, right now on a national level, but mm -hmm. we're talking about a world currency, and if this has some, you know, maybe something to do with them ushering in a new system, it uh, definitely seems to fit a little bit. Yeah. If we as uh, Christians aren't going to be able to buy or sell mm -hmm. um, in, during this future time, mm -hmm. um, this is some think the very near future. Yeah. How are we going to survive? A lot of people worry about that and wonder about that, and uh, it's important to remember first off that. When the children of Israel left Egypt and, and to, to go out into the desert, they had nothing out there. They had to rely upon their faith that God was going to provide for them. Mm -hmm. And he did. He provided them uh, manna in the wilderness. I mean, there, they, there, was no, um, there were no, no uh, corn fields out there, wheat. So, right. I mean, they had to rely upon faith. So that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to rely upon faith mm -hmm. when we get to those times. But there's, there's other examples showing us that we must do our duty as well to be prepared. Right. I mean, Joseph, um, I think he said that he uh, stored, uh, when he was high up in the, the Egyptian uh, kingdom there, that God gave him the dream and that there was going to be seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And he prepared for that famine by storing up for those seven years. Right. So I guess what I would say is that it's wise to be prepared, stock up, you know, stock up on your food and right. other supplies to make it through hard times, not only just for that time, the time when this happens, but any time. There could be any uh, natural catastrophe, uh, warfare that could cause you to need to be prepared. Right. <clears throat> How important is it uh, that someone does not take this mark, mm -hmm. the mark of the beast that we're talking about? Well. It's important as whether or not almost if you're going to lose your soul or not. It's that serious. Um, Revelation 14, 9 through 10 kind of answers that question for us. I'm just going to read that. Um, and it reads, And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast 
and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his name. Basically, as we talked about a little bit, this has to do with accepting that world currency. Okay. No buying or selling without it. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And I, actually, I'm going to go another verse or two here. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Hmm. You see, that's why I mentioned earlier, they can't force this mark of the beast upon you. Right. You have to willingly accept it so that uh, and, and uh, so that you can participate in society. You know, and that's the pressure that's going to be put on a lot of people. They're going to think, well, I want to survive. You know, and then they don't put their trust in God. Right. So they give in and they cave in and they and they worship the Antichrist so that they can buy a, a loaf of bread, buy some milk. Sure. And uh, let's go one more verse here, though. Um, well, just to comment again on what we just read there. If you did take the mark of the beast, God said here, he's not going to be too happy. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's talking about the wine of the wrath, you know, the wine of his wrath and so forth. But here it goes, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus and the faith of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's going to take to make it through those rough times is patience and faith. You know, patience means endurance, and faith means that you're relying upon God to provide for your every need, not bowing down to the Antichrist and his new world order to get right. by. Oh, absolutely. You know, while you were reading that, maybe what I want to do here is I want to read a couple verses from Revelation 13, which we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. um, the verses I want to read is uh, verse 15 through 17. And just to give us a little bit more insight here. Sure. It says, And he had power to give life, unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, that's everybody, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Back there in verse 15, it says that if you don't worship the image, mm -hmm. that um, you're going to be killed. Do you think the people are going to be killed? You know, throughout the entire Bible and throughout history as well, um, Christians and God's servants have been uh, persecuted and martyred throughout history. Mm -hmm. So could that happen again in the end times? Absolutely. I mean, right. it's written about. Is every, every is everybody who says they're a Christian going to be killed? Um, no. But... What you have here is when the Antichrist sets up this world currency and demands that everybody take his mark or the number of his name, um, this is his way of trying to enforce it. You know, if he's got a bunch of people running around uh, that say, no, I'm not going to participate in your system, um, how is he going to keep order? How is he going to keep his new world order government together right. without some kind of a uh, backlash or some kind of a... A punishment to those who do not, uh, those who will not accept it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be his decree. to say, hey, you need to accept this mark, participate in the, if you want to be able to participate in society as well as uh, being able to continue to live even. Right. And, um, and it's also to document this, Revelation 20 verse 4 talks about this. And um, let's read it there. It's always important that we go to God's word for our documentation rather than, you know, I could just simply sit here and give you my opinions and mm -hmm. say, uh, no, the Antichrist wouldn't say he was going to kill anybody. Well, he's the Antichrist. Sure. He's going to, you know, he's not a nice guy in the first place. But anyways, um, Revelation 20, verse 4, and it reads, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Okay, some a group of people sitting upon thrones. Who are they? And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast. Okay, that gives us our time frame. So there will be martyrs um, during that time of the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands.